Okay, um, welkom, uh, welkom uh, Roland van der Hof, um, author of Society 3.0, 3.0. And uh, Neil Gornflow, the man behind, amongst others, Sharing.net and uh, Shareable Magazine. Uh, we do a, a little bit of introduction on both of you, and then we talk about uh, sharing cities. What does it mean uh, in, in practice? Ronald, uh, you've been here before. We talked about Society 3.0, uh, but then we did it in Dutch because the book was in uh, uh, Dutch. Uh, what has happened to the book since uh, your, uh, your Dutch, Dutch version uh, uh, well, came out? And this is the English version. Well, what happened is that the time moved on. And when I wrote the, the Dutch book, it, I wrote it, I think the first texts were from 2010 and it's 2014 now. So a lot of things have been changing in the meantime. So I thought it was time for a revised version. And then since we're moving with, uh, with Seeds to Meet internationally, uh, we decided also to uh, to publish the book in English. Yeah, so you did, uh, no, most of the time people release a book and then it's just a matter of, uh, of translating, but yeah. in your case you, you, you needed it's to spend a lot of time again. It's completely, almost completely rewritten. Okay. I mean the topics yeah. you know I'm always writing about, about networking and, and sharing economy and stuff like that. Uh, that has changed so much over the past couple of years. You know, so it's it's it, 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 the original text was a little bit outdated. So again, uh, we updated it. Yeah. Hey, uh, for, uh, who um, uh, for who doesn't know? Um, um, if you had to give the the, the management uh, summary, what is society 3.0, 3.0? What do you say? Uh, three zero. Uh, three society zero, three okay. zero uh, or three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is it about? Okay. The management summary. It's uh, the management summary is it's, it shows um, where the crisis is coming from and that it's more than a crisis, but we're in a transitional period period between the industrial age and the new age and that new age I've called society 3.0 and it's showing how people as individuals and as organizations uh, can survive that transition period and what the future will be. Yeah and uh, if you give us uh, one uh, example of what what the future will be uh, will be like. The future will be like that, that but that's not a big secret that we are connected uh, Hardware around us is connected, and that creates a lot of new opportunities and threats. But yeah, that's, you know, uh, that, we, that's we, the consequences of that. Social, economically, are tremendous, and most people still don't realize uh, what the future uh, has has for them in uh, um, in in waiting. And and the key thing is, a lot of people underestimate the effects of this whole transition. I mean, most of the jobs will disappear. Um, we will see new organizations. Basically, we have to reinvent everything. Ourselves, society, economic systems, education, healthcare, uh, you name it, and it has to be reinvented. Yeah, but we need, as, as humans, we need anchors. We need, yeah. uh, and you say, well, you, you need it's to get, get used to, to, it's, to it's, everything that comes It's a quest. We don't, yeah, it, it's a quest for, for the future. We don't know yet what the future will look like. And that's created a lot of uncertainty at this moment within organizations and, and with people, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. The, the key is, is what I always and what I try to show the, the, to the people also in the book is uh, to look outside the window instead of uh, staring at your belly button and be afraid. Yeah. Hey, and uh, uh, okay. Uh, my next question was: What can people and organizations do to get ready for a society 3.0? Open up and be transparent, and that's easily said than be done, because most of the organizational structures always have been designed to keep everybody out. I mean, if you go to a corporation, I mean, you can't even walk into the the, the office building. You know, there are guards there and there are barriers and you need special badges to go in. Uh, they have an intranet, uh, all their software systems are, you know, with firewalls and stuff like that. And the key thing now is you have to open up and make connections with people you don't know. And you have to make connections with people you don't even realize what they can do or can mean for you. And that's the challenge. Yeah, and uh, for people uh, who don't uh, uh, know you, uh, uh, you, you, you said it yourself uh, with uh, Seeds to Meet, for example, we are going international. <coughs> and what you do over there is, uh, uh, well, it is a place where people yeah, can it's, connect. It's so a free zero company already. It's a networked organization and we are open. And, and it, it's an, uh, I mean, for instance, to, to keep it very simple, we don't do our own sales and marketing anymore, but that's done by the community. Um, it's, it's an open thing. We co-create value every day and we do that working with, within networks. So, and and it, a lot of things, we don't own it anymore. As long as we have access to knowledge and other people, you know, you can make a whole organization, make it globally grow even. And that's the key thing. My whole international organization is consisting at this moment of only four people. 
and then we are we are globalizing an organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, it's not a secret that I'm older than the average Dutchman, but and I'm not a startup. But it amazes me every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the tremendous opportunities and possibility you have if you are are open, authentic, and you work with with a, a network of dedicated people around you. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Neil, uh, when I look at the site of uh, Shareable, it says Shareable is a hub for the sharing transformation. Well, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I think it's another way of um, describing what uh, uh, Ronald has done with his book, you know, going from Society 2.0 to Society 3.0. Um, uh, but our take is a little bit more personal, you know, sort of from the city scale below. So, uh, um, and that's what we're doing with the Sharing Cities Network is taking this idea of Society 3.0 and making it um, more concrete in, um, in the city context and for in, in communities and in, in people's lives. Yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you give me uh, examples of, of concrete uh, cases of this sharing uh, world? Yeah, so it, you know, instead of owning a car, you share a car with a neighbor. So, for instance, uh, at home, uh, I live in Mountain View, California, and uh, Get Around uh, is a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing service, and I can go on there, and I rent my neighbor Peg Powell's car. She lives a few blocks over, and I just go to her house. Instead of a rental agency to get a car or to a car sharing pod, I use her car. And, uh, and I make a new friend, and that builds social capital in the neighborhood. And it feels good, too. It's just, it's more fun. You know, I don't know. I go to this bureau, and it's this bureaucratic thing where mm -hmm. there's like a script and stuff, and they try to sell me insurance that I don't need or something, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I take my bike over there and just leave it in our garage, and there's kind of a personal relationship. It's a very human interaction. So I think it, that's, you know, a, a piece of it at the, um, at the human scale, the interpersonal scale, like there's a reformulation of our, uh, of how we relate to each other. In consumer culture, we competed, you know, based on status and our earnings. And in here, it's like we approach each other with a kind of question, which is like, hey, what can we do together? What can we create together? What can we share? It's a very healthy, very rewarding way to... Yeah, but what we come from, from, a, from a time where... Uh, yeah. Well, people wanted to own uh, their car, especially cars is a really important thing. Yeah, America, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right. We yeah. love cars. Yeah. You know? So, so what in, in, in your uh, opinion, um, what is the basis of, well, the upcoming of sharing examples as, as this? Where does it come from? Why do, we, why do we want to do it now? Why do we want to do it now? I think... Uh, Part of it is necessity and preference, like necessity because of the economic crisis, that employment and wages are stagnating, right? Um, so people have to find different ways to um, you know, survive. And then the other thing is that they have new means to do it. So the internet is opening up these new avenues to share resources and making it easy. You know, like Get Around, for instance, it has the payment processing and the scheduling and the insurance, it's all built into the service. So it's, it, it's easier actually for me to rent it from my neighbor than to go to uh, you know, traditional car sharing organization or to rent a car, you know? So that's, I mean, that's part of it, yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, uh, which things do you see uh, that can be shared that we're not uh, sharing yet or maybe in little, uh, in, in little amounts? Well, I mean, I, actually I would like kind of challenge that question and like reframe it, which is, I think that we have a, 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 a almost tragic um, uh, low awareness of what we already share and how important it is uh, to our happiness and our well-being, right? And also, also to the health of the economy, that we tend to think that the market is the whole thing, right? And we measure it and everything. But, you know, from what I've learned doing Shareable for four years is hey, what the market is, just the tip of the iceberg. It's built on the commons, everything that we share, language, scientific knowledge, streets, sidewalks, um, you know, all this infrastructure, right? Like, we can't, we can't have business without that, right? So we have to start with the idea of recognizing what we already share and then, and then take it forward, yeah. right? Yeah. But you, 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 you mentioned it yourself that it's, it's, it's uh, very, very often it's a more uh, personal thing because uh, in my uh, op opinion it's that what makes it uh, fun. For example, right. I went to, uh, to England around Christmas and we had a, well, a place through uh, Airbnb and I had an old car through uh, Snapcar, Dutch, uh, Dutch servers. And when you look at the sites, what you see over there is that 
in, in my uh, opinion, it's more the people that get reviews even than uh, than, 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 than the products or the because because um, people always say, oh, it was so uh, a nice owner and she baked us uh, yeah. a cake and uh, and it's uh, such a nice owner of the car and because the relationship is different and it's more personal. Um, yeah, making it transparent. Yeah, you know because if you misbehave and you misuse the system. You know, it will be known as well, and you are being yeah. kicked out. Yeah, and I'd love it to so be to be. Um, um, that's uh, a great thing. It's, yeah. it's a self-quality controlled ecosystem yep. almost, and that's one of the, the largest strengths there. And is. as well, being rated as a, as a guest is exactly. nice as well. We get exactly. a good review yeah. as a family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. And you know, it's yeah. like the the better player you are in the market, the more wealth you have access to. That's that's the beauty, I think. You know, people are accountable. But they want to, but I think they're also that it's aligned with people's desire that they they want to do good and they want to give others a good experience. Like this mm -hmm. is very rewarding psychologically for human beings. We like that. You know, yeah. it's, this is part of fun. Yeah. The, um, uh, the, what are the, where do you see, we're going to talk about the sharing city and what it could look like, et cetera, in an right. ideal uh, world later. But what are the limitations where, of sharing stuff? What are the limitations of sharing stuff, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I think there are some barriers and, um, you know, certainly culturally, like uh, there's uh, many, may, probably most people, and especially in developed countries or developed, put that in quotes, uh, that, that, uh, uh, that this is a challenging concept, that they want their stuff and they want it themselves. And, and, and conversely, like uh, nations that are coming up in the traditional thinking about economics, um, you know, they, they may want to, have that stuff. They haven't arrived at that that mythical like middle class or you know affluent lifestyle, mm -hmm. and so to them to share is a kind of equated with being poor, right? Um, so that's that can be a kind of a barrier also, yeah. right? So um, I think cult culture, regulation, identity, like these all play a part, and um, they have to like Ronald said. Uh, this is a big transformation and everything in it has to be redefined to in, into the new system. So it's a longer term thing. Yeah, and sharing is disruptive. So it, it, you know, that's one of the barriers that the establishment won't take it for granted. They're going to fight it mm -hmm. you know, whenever they can because they, their existence is being threat, uh, threatened. Um, if you look at, for instance, the sharing economy, that's going to be 40 to 50 percent of what we call nowadays our gross national product. And that means that governmental systems, you know, they're going to be, sh be short of money. They're going to miss right. out 50% of the gross national income. I mean, and that's even more than the taxes they get now. So that means that governments have to be downsized and, and, for, right. and, so, and nobody likes that. And th that's going to be the biggest threat. And, yeah. and uh, you saw the cab drivers in Paris, you know, they were fighting against Uber and you saw the lawsuits against Airbnb because hoteliers are saying, yeah, well, this disrupting our businesses mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So every piece of business will be disrupted, including the government, political parties and stuff like that by the sharing movement. Yeah. So the impact is going to be huge. And the moment people start to realize that, then the establishment may, may start to fight. So either we end up with somewhere, but, but we create our own Armageddon, or it's the dawn of indeed a, a new era. Mm -hmm. Right. But the, 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 the thing is, when you, of course, you, you can um, uh, look at it to say, say the way both of you do, at a sort of a, uh, as a higher uh, level. But mo I think to, but most people who are doing the sharing stuff, they are not don't have the idea that they're part of a movement or part right. of a... Right, no. Uh, but it's no problem, exactly. that's what no. I mean, but isn't there... Because of course they're, they're just... And that can be an advantage kind of too, because yeah. like some people some people don't want to be part of a movement, they just, they're, uh, it's pragmatic. I mean, that, that's part of the power of sharing, it's very yeah. pragmatic. People are getting their needs met in a way that they can't using this, right? And, and, I, and I think, you know, you asked about like, what are the barriers, what are the limitations? Uh, on the other hand, I'd, you know, I would just kind of like push back and say, like, in a certain way, th this is inevitable because of the underlying economic drivers of it. That you get more productivity and efficiency at a time when we need it desperately, and people need uh, new ways. They they come to the sharing economy because of their needs, but they uh, but then they find that they have this new experience that keeps them coming back. Yeah. Ronald, do you, do you do you see that way as well? Is is the uh, uh, economic crisis the the basic of of, of, 
things like this? Well, the economic crisis is, is part of that transition uh, period I was referring to, and that means that the job for life has gone, organizations are going under, they're disappearing. So that means people are looking for new means to survive, to create value with each other. Um, and then you start, for instance, in my case, you know, about the whole co-working movement, where you share your knowledge and, and all of a sudden you see new economic uh, entities arising and they start to produce value in a very sustainable way. So a lot of people already experience and see the, the new opportuni opportunities there are. And, and the more companies are disappearing and are into trouble, the, 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 the more speed the, the whole sharing movement will get, will gain there. Yeah. And Ronald, is, 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 is the, 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 the sharing, is it um, uh, a part of, uh, of your book or how do you, the, the, the two of you relate to each other when, <laughs> no, we, when we say society? It's a very, Rio, and, a, I mean, I describe an economic model, I, I call it the interdependent economy. And half of the interdependent economy is what, what other people call the sharing economy. So right. it's a very uh, large uh, section of our economic and social well-being uh, in Society 3.0. So that's where, where we are meeting each other and that's how we met to right. begin with. Yeah. Because yeah. one thing doesn't go with the other. I mean, and access is more important than ownership. That goes basically for everything. Yeah. But it is, uh, like you say, a cultural thing, but it's a state of, a state of mind thing as well. Because uh, mm -hmm. we, we thought that the car would be, the, the, I would think the car would be the last, uh, the, the last thing to, uh, to share. Because there's so many people who find it important uh, to show what sort of a car, uh, yeah. a car they have. I mean, in America, a car is iconic, you know, and it's like uh, uh, historically sort of linked and linked by advertising and, and trillions maybe even invested in yeah. linking it to the ability to attract an, a mate and, and, and appear successful and the status symbol and a symbol of freedom, right? But I, I, the transition though is, is that the, it's no longer a symbol of freedom. It's uh, for, especially for young people who can't afford them, they're a burden, right? And the, the freedom, the symbol of freedom now is a smartphone. Because you can uh, because you can access so much from one device that's you hold with you mm -hmm. at all times, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and at the same time, uh, the, the freedom is that I can, um, well, if I want to show off, I can uh, rent uh, a yeah. really big car for right. only this uh, thing. If I've, I'm really practical, I can do another one. So it gives me more freedom as well in the different. All the cars are mine. Exactly. Can you even? I mean, in, in another way, like you have, it's better than owning a car. Yeah. You can have a Mercedes one day, and then you know a Mini the next day, and a pickup truck, and ex a six moving van, and like yeah, yeah they're uh, all available yeah. to you. I think there are in Amsterdam six Teslas you can uh, yeah. you right. can rent now, for example. Yeah. 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 and you can just pay for them on uh, by drink as you use them. Not yeah. have the storage insurance, all that stuff that you have to deal with when you own a car. Yeah. Hey, um, you. Um, uh, so one of your initiatives is uh, is, is the share, sharing uh, cities. Yeah. Uh, why did you start that? To take the whole idea of shareable that we that is kind of this online magazine and connection point and 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 make it concrete and put it at the community level and at, at um, and target it at a kind of scale of organizations cities you know um, that had a lot of promise like the very pragmatic cities uh, city governments typically typically are and and. Uh, not locked in ideological battles. Um, it's the scale that people can relate to. They live within them. You know, everything above the city scale is kind of a concept, right? The nation state and a global civilization, right? And uh, um, and you know, uh, so it's a very pragmatic move uh, to make this very concrete, make the sharing movement more concrete, put it at, at people's doorstep. Yeah. So if we make it concrete, what does a sharing city look like? A sharing city is, um, is you know, Society 3.0 at the, at the city scale, and it means that uh, citizens um, own the production and consumption and governance functions. They own, manage, and govern them, right, uh, directly with each other on a peer uh, basis and a network basis, right? Um, and so, for instance, uh, instead of um, the typical way that to the city decides how to spend tax dollars, the citizens decide how to spend tax dollars. Instead of um, uh, buying groceries from a big private chain, um, you buy it from a cooperative. Uh, 
like the Sakatsu Club in Japan, 300,000 members that own and manage and govern a, an economic enterprise, which has no waste, uh, and which 90% of the people that are involved are women, and they, edu you know, they elect people into the diet, that kind of thing. So, and then yeah, the people own the power system. But this is voluntary. It's not, people have to get together and organize it, right? The sharing city is something so that who people- who do, How do people yeah. see you in America? As a communist, a socialist? What is it when you say this? Depends who we, who we're meeting with. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, your, 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 it's not your typical- uh, Right, 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 right. Yeah, all of the above, actually. You know, it's like, you know- Yeah, all of the above. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, is, which is really interesting, you know? Uh, because I think what we're pointing to is a kind of third way, not, not conservative or liberal, kind of a new political formulation, a new set of social relations and political economy that's possible, that's, I think, more pragmatic and a kind of third way to make uh, this transition happen. Yeah. yeah. Ronald, what, what do we need to do if, if we, 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 well, we try to keep things on a, on a city scale? Of course, uh, um, uh, that can be big, uh, big as well. But So where do we start if we want to make a sharing city? Well, you can start in your own neighborhood. You can start right away. You, you can start um, at all kinds of, of locations there are from, from uh, places where things are being produced, uh, repair cafes, uh, seats to meet locations, Airbnb, what, what have you. Tool libraries, um, tool libraries seed banks. Uh, yeah, and it's there already, obviously, and the internet is connecting it. And when we say cities, I mean, one hand, it's small scale, but don't forget that all those cities, through its people, are interconnected globally. Mm -hmm. And that means that, that uh, in the future, cities will be more important than countries because interconnectivity doesn't stop at the border or because there's a language switch or something like that. So you will see, let's say, some, some local initiatives and some global initiatives, and that's a big blur. But the power is coming from people within that city who, st who start a movement, who start something, and then, then make the connections with, uh, with peers, basically all over the world. Yeah. Uh, if we are uh, 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 realistic, they say um, there is uh, 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 maybe a, a large group doing this, but in the whole scale, it's still a, a small group of people. Um, well, I think your, your general party, where I where, where my aunts uh, and, and etc. are, is not uh, not the issue that they discuss there. So what's what's right. necessary? Well, because they, to they they don't know, they don't realize the the real impact. But the first studies also, but, but you know that better than I do, from the United States show that for, for every car which is being shared, 13 cars are not sold or not bought. In that respect, well, think about, try to think about the consequences of that. You know, how much money does, does the government make from a car? On gasoline, on taxes, on, on uh, value-added tax, import taxes, etc. That's, mm -hmm. that's all will be gone. So but that's a, a lot problem, of people. Ronald. But the good thing is a problem because we need those tax for the establishment. It's a problem, yeah. but for us as well, we need we need the roads as well. We need I'm not the infrastructure we're going to in live, the country. I'm we not need saying we are going to live without taxes, but don't forget right. that the system, as we build it, especially in Europe, I mean, almost between 60 and 70 percent of all the money we are making is redistributed somehow through the government or governmental systems, and those systems. Look at our healthcare has become so expensive. And it has become so complicated and inefficient, you know. So it, mm. that's not a pleasant. That's a dead end. Basically, it's a dead. We don't. I don't think we have a choice there. The only way out. And you see the politicians now. They're saying, yeah, we see economic growth of one percent or two percent, or, you know, it's it, it, it's nothing. But the real growth is going to be within that sharing economy alone. Only the the establishment has a problem because you can't always value. In, in economical terms, let's say, the sharing value of something. You know, so, right. so there's a mismatch there, and that's why people don't address it, and they don't discuss it. And mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but, but what happens if, if everyone thinks this is a good idea, so no one buys a car? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but yep. I mean, Erwin, but you got to look at it like this way. The, it's current, the current economy that we have, if we continue, it's a bus riding off a cliff. So we need to experiment and do something different, right? So we have to, you know, let's start with that first, right? Like, we can't continue with that, no. the old economy, the society 2.0, right? Um, well, it's already stopped. Yeah. And it, it, the banks are, are banks, the whole financial system is holding us hostage. And the only thing we can think of is pour in more money, more money. Yeah, at, at the end, somebody has to pay for it. And it's in the 
You know. Yeah, but you say bring everything uh, back to say to, uh, I, I would say as small as possible uh, uh, scale, whatever yeah. uh, wh whatever that is. And you say that there's a lot of things you can do together, of course, and uh, and, and and with ownership as well. Um, uh, but uh, Ronald, you 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 would address it. What do we do with uh, our money? Well, the key thing, money as, as, as a currency unit to calculate with, and, and basically there's nothing wrong with money. We had a lot of benefits from money. I mean, money is a perfect mean oils, you know, to, to make the whole bartering work and the whole exchange of goods. So there's nothing wrong with that. But don't forget that only 5% of our total, the global volume of money is being used was where money was meant for. And with 95% of our total volume of money worldwide, we're doing completely different things. And that's where it went wrong. So what you see now is that people start their own currencies. You see companies that will start their own currency, yeah, like Google. They have Google coins, Amazon coins, Seeds to Meat coins. Um, Iceland is introducing the Aurora coin within 28 days. And that means that the whole population there will have a second currency unit there besides the, the Icelandic pound, which is then linked to the euro and stuff like that. So somehow using those local currencies will make the existing financial system less important. We don't have to get rid of it. We don't have to get rid of Europe, but we have to make it less important. We always need some governmental body, you know, if you want to have an, a road between two cities and stuff like that. Somebody has to coordinate it. So that will be there, but we have to make it less important. So we have to go around it. We have to find means. And the sharing economy and alternative currency systems are meant to go around the existing system and then making it less important. And that's the way out. Yeah. I only mm. do bitcoins, uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. all, that's all I do. We, we <laughs> mind them too. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, if, you, you, if, if, if uh, you talk to people uh, uh, who to who the, the ideas like this are, are uh, relatively uh, new um, and if people say yeah but then we get uh, chaos because we need we, we, we need hierarchy in a sort of a way in a setup what do you say to them I say try it out for yourself and make up your mind and give it an earnest try like uh, um, you know I think with sharing is a kind of a a kind of a threshold that you need to get to before then you're like really feel that sharing transformation, right? So, so yeah, I mean, we don't like to preach and on a soapbox, like that's not our style at Shareable. I mean, you go on it and it just shows people making it work for themselves. And yeah. if you, if you are need a solution and you see someone doing it in a different way and it's working for them, then try it out for yourself. Yeah, you said earlier on uh, what what you should have is not say a, a government that uh, or a local a local government that decides uh, where the money goes, but the people um, uh, decide where uh, the money goes. Um, so where did it go wrong? Was I think the original idea was that the local government was a representation of uh, the people? Yeah, I mean now that these the design of government is three hundred years old. You know, I mean it's outdated and it wasn't built for the scale of. The society that we have now, right? So, um, you know, but now we have a technology that can, can connect people, and and we can build a scale appropriate kind of government, and and people can uh, decide. I mean, part of the problem though is people see involvement in community stuff as uh, kind of a waste of time because it's time consuming and so forth. That's because their all their time is absorbed in just paying rent and putting food food on the table. So, if we are able to create a kind of liberatory economics at the local level where people own and control the production and they can bring down the cost of living and free up more time, work less, mm -hmm. so we have time to be be citizens. Like this is this is kind of the idea of uh, sharing cities. Like it's about people and it's about becoming citizens again. Yeah, uh, Ronald, uh, how can uh, uh, technology uh, help, uh, well, say democracy? Well, you can have one-to-one -one connections. So that's the ultimate democracy there is. Yeah. And uh, but in that, indeed, like Neil said, I mean, in, in Holland, the, the House of Torbecke, we call our political system, is over 250 years old. So. In those days, when they designed those systems, there were no other ways, you know, to get it organized, to get the job done. So we started doing that, but now we have completely different ways of, of doing it. I mean, why can't you have a direct representing and and having like super polls and stuff like that, or even measure big data and see what sentiments are on topics? And we have completely different tools nowadays, you know, to make democracy work. Yeah. And right. obviously that will much better work than the, the old system because the people who are supposed to represent us, 
you know, they have become, they have been driven so far apart from the day-to-day -day reality because those systems have become so huge and big and, and inefficient and, and people are there for themselves. Yeah, and you They're not there for us. That's yeah. the key. Yeah, well, you, you, you talk in uh, them, uh, them, them and us. Yeah, that's, that's what, what you, you get. Yeah. That's what you get. But the people, when they go into politics, they're us as well. Yeah, I mean, but then the system absorbs so, you. So that's, it's, you it's, know, it's and, impossible and that's, to make really a different in a system like this. No, the, yeah. the key thing is, and that's the, the, the one thing of the establishments, what they're doing, they're embracing you and then they cuddle you to, to death. I mean, that they mm. absorb you and then they make, they make you play their rules. Mm. And they're much better at their rules because they, have, they know the rules, they have the budgets and the money. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in, in creating a new political party, for instance, because the moment you do that, automatically you become part of the old system. Yeah. Right. So I rather see more like, like um, ad hoc movements and ad hoc action groups and ad hoc interest groups. And, you know, they do their thing, they've achieved their goal and then they're gone again. Mm -hmm. you know, and you're active in various levels and various gr networked groups. And, and that's where the power is. And we have a problem here and we hook up with a similar group in Tokyo and see how they solved it. We exchange knowledge and then we take over their solutions. We start to collaborate. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you have global solutions for local problems and vice versa. Right. Yeah. And, and do you think, because uh, um, um, uh, are people, uh, what I said, do they mind enough about what is happening uh, ar ar around them to, yeah, if you say well, there's more uh, possibilities in, in uh, you, you, don't have, you don't need to have a democracy that's there every four years, but you could have sort of daily polls or you could have uh, stuff like that. Do, are people interested enough in the world around them to get a system like this uh, work? Uh, they, uh, my experience is that people don't know what they want, but they know, but we're at a point where they are completely dissatisfied and do not trust what's out there, yeah. right? So big institutions, big, um, you have to look at the Edelman surveys about trust and it shows like governments and big corporations on this like downward trend of trust and trust in uh, NGOs and individuals going up, right? So that clearly to me, that's a sign of like people opting out um, and being disengaging, but they're, but they're also looking and that, that's part of the rise in the popularity of shareable and why we've built a, you know, a sizable audience is that people are searching for solutions. They don't know exactly what they want, but they know that the old thing is not working for them. Yeah. But, okay. but look at the situation right now. I mean, in, in, into politics, you have a red guy, you have a blue guy. I don't like being red, so I vote for the blue guy. They start working together and they start acting yellow. And that's then the result. So people have an idea that no matter how they vote and what their involvement is, they cannot influence the existing system anymore. So that's why they don't seem to be interested. Yeah, the thing, and the thing I always had, for, for example, at a certain stage, uh, people, um, uh, yeah, I know a little bit about uh, about media, for example, and I said, well, I don't want to become a part of a political party, but I want all the parties to benefit from uh, what I know. But that that's, is not in, system, in place as well, that system. No, you can't no. uh, do that, so you can't use the knowledge um, uh, the, the way you would like. A question I have about the... the um, all the, the um, uh, services there are, are in the end, say the guys behind Airbnb, just not clever guys that have found a, way, a, a new way of making a lot of money? Right. Um, yeah, yes and no, right? I mean, um, uh, but it also goes back to like, I think we have a different definition of the sharing economy than Silicon Valley does, right? And the, yeah. media, the mainstream media does. And the sharing economy to us is all these models, nonprofit, for-profit, um, that help people share resources are part of it, right? So it's not just the Silicon Valley startups or sharing economy no. to us, also no. cooperatives and yeah, innovation. And, yeah. and if you look at your site, you see uh, like a lot of examples of what people are doing in their day-to-day -day life. That's right, in their neighborhoods yeah. with their neighbors, yeah. like tool libraries and yeah. stuff, like very yeah. grassroots stuff. Yeah. There's kind of long tail of sharing there too. Yeah. Like, you know, Airbnb gets all the press and they're you know, cohorts, but um, also things like community gardens, tool libraries, um, hacker spaces, co-working spaces, they're also growing really rapidly and replicating globally also. They just don't get as much press. No. So Roland, how do you see that? The Airbnb is just clever, guy, clever guys found a new niche to make money. Yeah, they did. But again, like Neil saying, there's much more than we often see. And I think that what you will see is the rise of what I call crowd companies. 
you know, organizations who are existing from within a network, and in the end they will never go, let's say, public and raise the money there, but they will go public within their own network, you know, and, mm -hmm. and they crowdfund basically what, what's going on. And I'm sure that in, in the near future, uh, people who are a member of a network or use a particular service, they will be very critical of what the future of what they consider to be their company is going to be. So it's a combination between, let's say, a, a socialistic way of thinking that we have to share and, and we have to equalize that. But on the other hand, we have to raise money in a very capitalistic way. Yeah. So you will see a new a blurring of a new kind of organization arising there. I mean, don't forget that, for instance, most co-working centers, they always go back to the traditional membership model. Yeah, that, that's, that's part of the experience. We have to learn to develop new economic models for that. Right. And Airbnb, of course, they had a great idea, but if they monetize it, they go back to the old system. And you see a lot of guys, in, in, uh, also in the Netherlands, they, they make their own books, but in the end they go to a traditional publishing company. Because, well, that has to change. And the moment that's changing, then you will see completely new industries and, and, and new type of, of companies arising. Yeah. Well, you said, uh, when I did the Dutch version, what was it, three years ago, you said, I yeah, think? Yeah, uh, The whole world, uh, a lot of changes mm -hmm. uh, have been there. So if you have to say, what is uh, well, one of the uh, biggest changes uh, three, uh, well, since, yeah, the since biggest, three years. Well, it's, it's a realization that the crisis we are experiencing right now is more than a crisis. And a lot of people realize that things will be never go back to business as usual. And that was really four years ago that wasn't the case. People were saying, you know, well, it, things will get better automatically and stuff like that. And what we see on the other hand is that a lot of people, they don't know yet how, but they see that the strength of really of, of networks, of value networks, to create value within networks. And a network is something else than a community. Ten, four years ago, we were discussing communities and how to build up a community and how to attract people and stuff like that. But now you see much more in, in a new economic playing field. Uh, it's called the mesh. It, it's a combination of a couple of value networks. It's a chaotic system. You know, there's no real order in it. There's no hierarchy in it. Uh, and more and more, we, we start to understand how you can create social and economical value from within those value networks. And that knowledge, I mean, that, that's, that's the revolutionary thinking which we have been achieving over the past four years. Yeah. What was that book again from years ago? The Spider and the something? It was a book about... Was oh, back really from Backstrom. Uh, the Starfish so. and the Spider. Oh, Starfish and the Spider. It was really early yeah. on. Ex uh, yeah. Exactly, I was thinking about it because he was, of course, mentioning uh, as well the, the um, yeah. a lot of the elements you, yeah, you, you exactly. talk about now. So and, and don't forget that we are practicing it now. Eh? With, with Seeds to Meet, we have been in business now for a couple of years and we have proven that working with a networked organization can be economical sustainable. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Hmm. And um, okay, he looks uh, three years back. If you look uh, uh, three years uh, forward, that's a small period of time, of course. But I don't like to uh, look twenty <laughs> years uh, uh, in advance. So where do you see when you, when you say in your field and where right. you are looking at? Where do you, right. where do you see the biggest growth or the big the most important things happening? Um, well, I work back. From, you know, we sort of like don't like to make predictions. Like, I'll do it for me. Rather, what we do is, uh, you no, know, you don't get an exception, Urban. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, uh, I know it's your show. Um, but, but uh, you know, rather we ask people what they want and, and what can they do today and tomorrow to create the kind of world and life that they want. And that the, this transition that we're in, it's a moment in which we, I think um, individuals have a, um, a distribution proportionate amount of power to influence things and push them in a direction that they want them to go, right? And so how can we create a f future that's good for human beings, good for the planet, and that's more fun, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and Ronald, because you like to look forward. You make predictions. So where, 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 we, where will we be in, uh, in three years' time when you do uh, your Japanese version? <laughs> <or> your, uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's moving along the same lines. I mean, the, the traditional establishment uh, will have still will have a hard time. It will be smaller. Large companies uh, will no longer be there. Companies as we know them now, they will disappear like they've been disappearing. We see that the... the, the but there are, aren't, aren't, aren't the, say, the Googles of this world the, the, the new big companies? Could be. But I don't give you any guarantee that Google will be around in four years. 
Four years even. Or, yeah. or ten. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, we have seen that in other guys like Napster or even Polaroid and, and companies like that. They had the technology, they had everything, they had market share, they had plenty of money, they had access to all the, the bright minds of this world, and still they're no longer with us. Mm. So, and, and that will continue. It's as simple as that. And it, it can, we are in a junction, you know, either it's going to be in certain countries like we see now in Venezuela or the Ukraine. Uh, you see a revolution of type of, of developments. We had riots in London, we had riots in Sweden and, and so on. So it, it, it doesn't necessarily always have to be a nice development. But on the other hand, things are going on and the sharing economy will grow, you know, whether we like it or not. It simply is there and it won't go away. It's the same thing where municipality is saying we're going to check out all the Airbnb addresses for it because they're illegal hotels. How are you going to do that? Yeah. Check 15,000 addresses per night or so. I mean, yeah. forget right, it. So, right, right. I mean, the, the, the spirit is out of the bottle and it, it won't go back in. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, I think because of lots of the long-term sort of systemic drivers for this, you know, because of people preferences, they want something different, because the old system isn't working, because of the new tools that are available, because of um, uh, how fun and uh, economically rewarding that this is, that this is going to continue and grow. Okay, thank you very much both. And um, yeah, of well, course, this well. is the book. You can look for society30.com is the place where you can find all the information about it and your URL is? Yeah, so shareable.net and follow us at shareable. And on Facebook, you can go to the Sharing Cities Network and join our Sharing Cities movement. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Thank, thank you. you both. All right.